G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. There has been so much Nikon news going on at the moment that I haven't been able to talk about all of it. Obviously, we've had the absolutely massive things like Nikon going to space, Nikon acquiring RED, firmware 2.0 for Z8 and firmware 5.0 for Z9. But there's actually been so much more going on. In this video, I'd like to just very quickly touch on it to keep us all, including myself, up to date. First, we're going to talk about some news coming out of Japan as to what the top selling cameras are in two of the larger stores. We have Yodobashi as well as Map Cameras. And this is for the month of February. And I think it's pretty interesting because Nikon is doing really well in both stores with slightly different roundups. Let me share with you what is the top 10 from those two stores. Firstly, we have Yodobashi with the Nikon ZF and number one, OM Systems OM1 Mark II, number two, the Sony A7C Mark II in three, the Leica Q3, which has obviously just been released, so that's going to be big and I suspect that will fade off quite quickly. And number four, Fujifilm X-T5, number five, the Nikon Z8 at sixth, the Ricoh GR3X in seven, Canon EOS R6 Mark II in eight. Interestingly, that is the first time that Canon has appeared. The Fujifilm X100V at nine, and the DJI Osmo Pocket at number 10. So that's really interesting. Now, that's a massive consumer photography range of stores. They have a number of stores across Japan. Then we have Map Camera that I visited when I was in Japan. That was very exciting. We have the Sony a7C number two at number one. We have the Nikon ZF with the 40mm kit lens at number two. The Sony a7C again with a kit. So there's two different kits at number three. The OM Systems OM1 Mark II at number four. The Nikon Z8 at number five. And this is really interesting because the Z8 has been out nearing a year now. And at both stores, it's at number five and number six position. So continuing to sell very, very strongly for such a high-end camera. Map camera we have at number six, the Sony a7 IV. Number seven, the Sony a7R5. At number eight, the Nikon Z50 double zoom kit. At number nine, the Sony FX3 body. And at number 10, the Nikon ZFC. This means that Nikon appears four times in the top 10. Canon does not appear once in this list from map cameras and only appears once in the other list at number eight. Really interesting stuff. What that tells us that right now in February of 2024, that both Nikon and Sony are doing very well, and quite frankly, Canon are not. Who knows what they're going to do next? I suppose we're going to see an R5 II and an R1. Both of these cameras are expected at some point this year. Fingers crossed, really, at this point in time for Canon users. And Viltrox has dropped absolutely massive news that they're going to be releasing over 10 lenses in 2024. And this includes three, no less than three, full frame 1.2 lenses that they are calling their lab lenses. They're also planning on releasing 1.4 lenses, which they call Pro. And of course, they already have a full range of 1.8 lenses, along with some APS-C lenses. So let's very quickly run through what Viltrox plans are for 2024. Can't wait to get my hands on some of these lenses. In the 1.2 lab range of lenses, we have the 35 1.2, the 50 1.2, and the 85 1.2, along with a 135 millimeter 1.8. I have to say this sounds a lot like Nikon's lineup, but of course we don't have the 35 1.2 yet. Coming soon. Watch this space, I suppose. Then we move on to the 1.4 full frame pro lenses, the 35, the 50, and the 85, along with an unknown f1.2 APS-C lens. Now we've already had the 27 and the 75 1.2 APS-C pro lenses 
from Viltrox. So perhaps there might be a lens somewhere in between those two. That would make sense to round out that range. Finally, we end with a 40 mm 2.5 full frame, a 56 1.7 APS-C and a 16 mm 1.8. And Viltrox have also teased a 30 to 300 mm f4 through the range fully manual cine lens which i have to say just looks a little bit hot and i am very excited about it quite frankly what viltrox is doing here is quite spectacular and the way that their lenses have continued to improve and mature over time i am very excited 2024 nikon is just nikon z mount is just going to have so many lenses to choose from and this is just from viltrox but wait there's more. Miki have also telegraphed that they have three more of the 1.4 lenses coming. I just reviewed the lens that you can see here, which is the 85 1.4, which I found optically to be a really good lens. Well, further to their 1.4 range, they're going to be giving us a 24 millimeter, a 35 and a 50. They will be all full frame lenses. And of course, now that Nikon is moving hardcore into cinema with their recent announcement that they are purchasing red well this cine lens makes even more sense than it did before but of course the z8 and the z9 and the zf are absolutely outstanding video cameras they just are in a different box they're in a stills camera box but the technology within the codex the autofocus all absolutely outstanding i'm using these cameras all the time and we can even go back as far as the good old Z6 that I'm shooting on right now, the very first camera alongside the Z7, which was launched six years ago. Absolutely immaculate and works totally fine in this sort of situation. If you ever hear someone saying they're sitting here in this sort of situation, a talking head camera, and they can't trust a Nikon Z to keep them in focus, I'm really not sure what they're talking about because I've been using them for six years and, well, here we are in focus. This is Z6. The ZF, the Z8 and the Z9 are astonishingly better. Uh, and that would be if I was moving really quickly. But if you're a talking head sitting still, no dramas. It's almost impossible to miss the news that the new Fuji X100 was launched and it has sold a lot of copies. Now, I've heard various people telling me that it's a hundred thousand it's five hundred thousand it's a million units i don't know it doesn't really matter and fuji were aware that it was probably going to be massive so they are manufacturing it in much higher quantities in china and i hope that you if you've ordered one you get your copy soon congratulations to fuji for that outstanding effort and creating a compelling camera for the camera loving audience in sigma news they've released a very interesting 500 mil f 5.6 which does not have a fresnel lens in it they've done it a different way but it is an extraordinarily small lens now this is just for e mount and l mount at the moment but i have a feeling it will come to z over the next year or two because i think it'll be a great option alongside say the 400 mil 4.5 or if you just want a little more reach you can go this 500 mil 5.6 they've also released a 15 millimeter fish eye lens let's talk about it in the comments below if you love fish eye tell me why i'd love to know and what you do with it for those that love rumors i do it's lots of fun to speculate about just like who is going to be the next james bond there is a rumor that Sigma will make a 50 mm 1.2 for the E mount and for the L mount. Yay, I love 1.2s, they are the best. Now, as I talked about, there is new firmware 5 for the Z9 and there are one or two features, at least one feature in that new firmware, which requires you to get the new version of SnapBridge. So if you didn't know, download the latest version of SnapBridge. Hopefully it works even better than all of the previous versions. That's what we want out of our firmware upgrades, things to keep getting better. Download it now. Atomos. 
Atomos is an Australian company that makes recorders and screens for the digital camera industry. Now, they have had an association with Nikon for a long time, and they have very recently put out a press release stating that they are very excited about Nikon's purchase of RED, and they look forward to what the future holds. This is coming from the co-founder of Atomos, Jeremy Young. He has come back to the business and is the managing director and CEO as of the start of this year. And he says, we have already collaborated with both famous brands, and I am absolutely convinced that this new move will result in an explosion of innovation. I am particularly pleased for Nikon as they were one of the first companies to listen to us to give us a clean HDMI feed from their DSLRs, helping us to give birth to the Ninja Monitor Recorder. It is thanks to their belief and cooperation that Atomos has become the strong brand it is today. I can't wait to see what the combined talents of the two teams come up with. There's a lot of interesting information that comes out of that statement from the co-founder of Atomos, talking about the fact that Nikon was one of the first companies to understand what Atomos was trying to do and the fact that they were very helpful in helping Atomos create the Ninja and bring that to market. And for those who were in the run and gun or video space and wanted to record remotely or who even wanted a very high quality external display, Atomos Ninja has absolutely been the go-to brand and go-to hardware for many of us all over the world. Now, Atomos is a company here in Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne is where I live, and I'm going to reach out to them, and hopefully I might be able to interview them and get more of a sense of where they hope all of this will go and where they will fit into the equation. There is a little bit of an update on what is going on in the camera industry, mostly Nikon. We're going to get more back into these news updates covering the general photographic industry as a whole. This year is going to be massive, and we've got all sorts of other camera brands to talk about in the next episode because so much has happened this year already. All right, it's been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right, bye for now.